Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll show you how to automatically morph between two snapshots in Reactor. And I'm going to build a simple macro that you can drop into any existing synth to add this functionality. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're coming out with a new Reactor video every week. Okay, so the module that's going to do our heavy lifting today is the snapshot module, which you can find in the auxiliary menu. And we can get a little bit more information about what's going on with a snapshot menu, uh, module in the snapshot tab of the side pane over on the left hand side here. And we're going to be using the morphing and random uh, section today. So you can open that area by clicking on the little icon here. The morphing section is on the top here in this area. I'm circling with my mouse and you can select any either of these boxes on the left or right sides here to select a snapshot for that box for A or B and then you can morph between the two um, with this horizontal slider here. And today we want to make a simple macro to do this automatically. So we're going to use the morph input of the snapshot module. And I'm going to trigger a new envelope on a new MIDI note. So what we're going to do is use a gate module in conjunction with a compare module and an ADSR envelope. And what the compare is going to do is make sure that our gate is always at its maximum velocity. And that way um, the envelope will start at a value of 0, it'll rise to 1, and then it'll fall to the sustain value. And when the value at the morph input is equal to 0, we're going to be at snap snapshot A. And when it's equal to 1, we're going to be at snapshot B. So we're going to use the envelope to morph between the two snapshots. And we can't use the envelope directly because the morph input takes events and the envelope is an audio module. So we'll have to use an audio to event module. And I'm also going to multiply the output of this by a button that's going to be e either equal to 0 or 1. And that way if the button is off, the morph position will always be equal to 0. And um, we can turn off the morphing with this button, basically. And when we're done with this, uh, we'll start working on giving us sell ourselves an input for the morph time, which is this little input here. And basically, this is the amount of time in milliseconds that it's going to take to travel from our old position to our new position. And we want this time to equal the um, be equal to the distance and time between events. So our A to E module is going to spit out events at the control rate, which we can get from the system info module out of the CR output. And the morph time is in milliseconds and the control rate output is going to give us the speed of our events in Hertz. So we have um, a thousand milliseconds in a second and we're going to divide that over the number of events in a second and the output will be the number of milliseconds per event. And we can use that to feed the morph time. All right, so the last thing we need to do is give ourselves a way to choose our A and B snapshots. And whatever snapshot we load up in our ensemble is going to be automatically become our new snapshot A. So we only really need to worry about setting a value for snapshot B. And we can, to do that, we just need to trigger uh, the B input of our snapshot module. 
and when the b input receives a positive event whatever our values at this snap and bank inputs are is going to become our new snapshot b so we're just going to use the current um, snap and bank values to feed those inputs and to do that i'm going to store them both in value modules and whenever we have a recall um, event we will trigger those value modules to feed the snap and bank inputs so this means that whenever we select the snapshot b with a button it's going to load the current snapshot as snapshot b and it'll already automatically be loaded as snapshot a as well so then after that we need to select another um, snapshot to become snapshot a and then we can start morphing between our sounds so let's set this guy to be always active and then we're gonna have to set everything to be mono and I'm gonna save this as a macro and when we do then you can just load this macro into any existing ensemble so first let's go to the panel and rearrange things for a bit line up all our knobs and I'm gonna make the snapshot module invisible and we can rename this button and call it morph and that'll just turn on whether or not we're actually gonna be morphing between snapshots and finally let's rename this and when we hop back to the structure view we can right click and use the save macro as function to save the macro all right so now that we have this finished uh, let's see how it works in an existing ensemble i'm going to load up um, steam pipe 2 which is one of my favorite reactor synths you don't need to save this because we've already saved the macro which is the important part and I'm just going to jump into the steam pipe structure view here and load it up. And unfortunately, the way that the background is designed for steam pipe is a little awkward here. It just kind of starts repeating if we try to create more space. And I could fix that, but it's not really worth the time right now. So I'm just going to drop it right here. It's going to look a little ugly, but I'm sure we'll all get the point. And it's easiest to um, use the snapshot pane over here if we want to see what's going on with our loaded snapshots that are, we're going to be morphing between. So that's without morphing. Watch what happens when I load a new snapshot. You notice that all of our knobs just went back to their default values and buttons as well. So what we need to do is go into the properties for these and change them to turn on the snapshot isolate function for each of our element panel elements here. And if there's any knob that you want to turn off from being used for the morph, then you can turn off, turn on the um, morph random isolate as well, which is directly below. And basically the snapshot isolate function is just going to make it so that none of these knobs um, save values by snapshot. They'll always just have one value that you set. And that way they won't load up new stuff whenever you change snapshots.
All right, so that's how to morph between two snapshots automatically. I'll include a download of this macro in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please check out our website at reactortutorials.com, and hopefully I'll see you next week.